we had a call yesterday towards the end of the show from a fine lady named Kinsey. And Kinsey was calling on behalf of her husband who has a, uh, a some type of a gene issue. Gene deletion. Thank you, Madison. And it causes him to have uh, social anxiety. And he struggles to communicate one-on-one. But again, he's, he's able to, but it's a struggle. And so she was sharing this challenge, and she said, we just discovered your show uh, a, week, a week or so ago, and we went to KenColeman.com. We got the uh, Get Hired Guides, which includes the resume template um, and, and why you flip the resume. And then we tell folks in our interview guide how to rock the interview. And she says, so we went all that, but he struggles, you know, he, he, after he meets somebody and he spends a little time with them, it's a lot easier. But what does he do when he goes into an interview? And I said, and by the way, the guy's a mechanic, uh, a, a whiz around machines, works on oil rigs, uh, heavy equipment engines. So big engines. So I said, you know, Kenzie, if I'm interviewing a mechanic, I really don't need him to be the best spoken person in the world. I don't even need him to look super fancy and look all put together. You know, I don't trust a mechanic, Joe, that clothes are clean and his fingernails are clean. You know what I'm talking about? I want the mechanic who's got the stain of engine grime underneath his fingernails. He's cleaned them. They're clean, but they're just stained. This is a guy I want. And I said, so I would walk in and I would tell your husband that when he starts the interview, that he calls it right out. Hey, my name is Ethan and I have gene deletion, which causes this. Boom. Just call it out. And as a result, I struggle in one-on-one interviews. I was never good at taking tests. But crazy thing is you put me around an engine and I'm at home and I'm really, really good. And I've worked on oil rigs for 15 years and I did 10 years on big rig engines and, you know, big trucks and all that. And just call it out in the first 25, 30 seconds. And you go from what might be an awkward situation to an empathetic, compassionate situation. So this was the advice I gave. So we get this email I'm holding in my hands. Uh, by the way, I like the physical printouts, folks. All right. I still like something between the old fingers. Uh, she says, hey, Ken, thank you for the call. Uh, I gave Ethan your advice. He had his second job interview l- uh, later in the day. And he said the interview went really well. And he was very excited about it. He did what you told him to do. And up front told him about the anxiety and the challenges. She said the rest of the interview went really well, and they asked him to come back for a second interview. We're crossing our fingers for the job, and he now has confidence for future interviews. How about that? Huh? I love it. So fun. Uh, You know, I went off on a rant yesterday talking about it's not a disability that Ethan has. He's differently abled. Instead of disabled, let's start looking at ourselves as differently abled. We all are differently abled, whether somebody's labeled us with a disability or not and just own it.